Hello and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's review for Interface, which is episode 3 of season 7 of Star Trek The Next Generation. This video is part of a series of videos where I review episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation one episode at a time. In this video I cover the 7th season episode, Interface. So Interface is the episode in which uh, Jordy is doing this weird technology where he operates a probe by remote, but he actually feels like he is the probe and he sees everything around him and then he gets the news that his mother's ship has disappeared and everyone including his father is writing uh, his mother off for dead but then while he's on the in the probe interface he sees his mother and then becomes convinced that she's trapped on the planet but nobody else believes him because and they don't want him to go back because it's very risky and it could um could end his life if he keeps up going to the interface so they order him not to go in and they don't really believe him about his mother so he defies orders goes into the interface finds his mother helps her but then learns it's not actually his mother it's an alien who's trapped on the ship trying to get Jordy to help him and took on the form of his mother in order to try to manipulate him into helping them so he does help them and he saves the aliens and Crusher is able to come up with an ingenious way to disconnect him from the interface and save his life. But the mystery as to whatever happened to his mother is never resolved. So, I have to say, um, when I saw this episode coming up on the list, I had a gut reaction like a... Ugh, kind of instant reaction like god i gotta watch this boring episode but you know what it wasn't actually quite as bad as i remember it being not that it was it particularly good <laughs> but uh i can see that this episode does have some merit uh, I remember when I first saw it, I really didn't care for it. I just thought it was a very throwaway concept. Um, because I think the main issue with this episode, that I didn't think it was particularly bad, I just never felt interest in it. Like, I never felt connected in it. It was just kind of boring or just kind of there. And I think the main issue with it is that... <sighs> We don't really know who Doherty's mother is, and they can't, they introduce his mother and father in this episode. They were barely mentioned uh, in the show at all. They were never seen, and all of a sudden they pop up, and the whole episode hinges on Jordy being depressed over his mother's death and looking for his mother. And I feel like, you know, you can get some connection to that just through Jordy, because we know Jordy as a character but i think it would have helped if we also knew his parent for let me make the comparison to the uh episode that will be coming up soon dark page where troy's mother is at risk which i actually think is a much better episode because we know who troy's mother is we know Loxana. And so when her life is in danger, we were more invested, we were involved, even if we do find her incredibly annoying and maybe don't like a lot of episodes she's in, we still know her. And so we're still connected when her life is in danger and Deanna has to take a risk. Uh, you know, these two episodes are actually kind of similar. <laughs> but anyway, that one's much better, though, uh, because I, I felt more involved, more invested. Um, and we... Uh, and I gotta be completely frank here, is that we actually don't know Jordy all that well. He's probably one of the most, the least developed characters in the main cast. Uh, him and Dr. Crusher. Um, but I think him even more. And so, that might be part of the reason why I find it hard to get invested in this, where he's getting upset about his... Um, his mother and he's getting a bit obsessed over it and not refusing to listen to everyone which i guess is kind of in character for him if i'm thinking back um to episodes like um galaxy's child <laughs> and uh aquiel is very similar sort of attitude that he had in aquiel is the rebellious type whatever but um 
I don't know. I just felt a hard. I felt uh, it was a difficult task to actually care that much about what was happening in the episode. And funnily enough, <clears throat> so this idea of a storyline was originally pitched by Joe Manowski. You know, Joe Manowski, good old Joe, the writer I don't really care for that much. Anyway, it was pitched by him back in season five, so two years prior to this. Um, but the original idea had um, Riker being the one interfacing with the probe, and then he would learn that his father died recently, and so would have, like, visions of his home in Alaska or something like that. That's what I heard. That actually sounds like a better idea. I mean, even though that episode that Riker's dad appeared in sucked, uh, Icarus Factor, I hated that one, and the Riker's dad himself was an arrogant prick that I didn't care for, at least I know him. And I, like, I know the backstory with Riker and his father and how they didn't get along. And they bring it up several more times. Uh, like they brought it up in Second Chances when you know we, Will met his duplicate. And they asked, oh, what about my father? And he was like, I want nothing to do with him. And, and um, so they mention him a lot. We know who he is. We've seen him. And so I would feel more connection to it. In fact, I think they could have gone in really interesting avenues with that because they could explore how he feels because he sh sort of hated his father, shunned him, refused to talk to him, and then if he founds out he died without having forgiven him, how that could, like, plague his subconscious if he refuses to admit it, and so he would go into this probe thing and then his subconscious would play try to make him realize um how guilty he actually feels like that would be really interesting i, I dare say would be much more interesting than what they did in this episode um yeah i kind of wish they did that so um i think it was noreen shankar who wanted to revisit the story idea uh or maybe it was michael pillar I believe someone, or maybe it was Jerry Taylor. I, I'm I think it was Jerry Taylor wrote a memo to Michael Pillar saying we should revisit this story idea. But the decision was made to make it Jordy LaForge instead of Riker, mainly because they just did a mind-twisty episode with Riker uh, in Season 6 with Frame of Mind, and they didn't want to sound to be too repetitive. Um, which, hey... I wouldn't mind another frame of mind. Frame of mind was amazing. <laughs> and Jonathan Franks proved he was up to the task. And besides, the story idea sounds different enough where I really don't think people would find it repetitive. Like, I hear about this all the time when I'm reading behind-the-scenes stuff about the writer's room in Star Trek Next Generation. All the time they seem to be like, oh, no, we can't do this episode because it's too similar to that. But it's not actually, really. Like, they should have done it. Like, the Voyager episode, Remember, was originally written as a TNG script. I believe it was season seven, actually. Um... And they said, oh, no, we can't do this idea because it's too similar. It's a Holocaust analogy, and Schindler's List is that we don't want to seem like we're copying Schindler's List. But the episode, remember, it was nothing like Schindler's List. I mean, it dealt more with Holocaust denials and propaganda than it did with any with the things that, even though they're loosely a Holocaust analogy, doesn't make it too much like Schindler's List. By that reasoning, Duet would be too much like Schindler's List, although I'm sure that episode came out before Schindler's List. But still, um, that's a dumb reasoning. <laughs> and, and there's other examples of the writers being like, oh no, this is too similar to that thing, but it actually isn't really. So this is, this is um, a good idea but they kind of just, they flubbed it by worrying about it being too similar to something else. Um, which is funny, ironic, considering in Enterprise where Bruno Brega just copies all the other Star Trek episodes. He's like the exact opposite. He, uh, it's funny, in an interview I heard him say once that, oh, you know, these Star Trek fans seem to notice when you recycle ideas. I'm like, yeah, they do, because that's called bad writing. <laughs> I, of course he would be the one to say it because I'm sure he heard a lot of shit about all the story ideas that he just recycled and copied during Enterprise's first two seasons but 
Anywho, and the third season had that doctor. Was it called Doctor's Orders, which is a rip off of the Voyager episode one? But, but anywho, <laughs> anyway, sorry, not here to rehash my Enterprise gripes. I will get to that in a couple of years. Um, so yeah, so I think that it would have been better as the Riker idea because. Similar to why Dark Page worked, it would have been a character we actually met, the parent who died we actually met, and um, it would be, you know, Riker who we'd be more invested in. So, the other thing I was thinking of when I was watching this episode is this is kind of going off of the virtual reality, the VR phase in the early 90s with, you know, Lawnmower Man. It was seen like this new, hip, fancy you know, cool technology, the wave of the future, and you definitely get that, that sort of VR connection with when Geordi's in the interface, and that is really based off of that. But of course, it's not virtual reality, he actually is in reality, he's operating a probe remotely, um, but I do see there was definitely that VR connection. Um, and it made me think about how little VR technology has advanced. Like, in the early 90s, we used to think it would be the wave of the future. And if there was, like, a, a you know, a t movie or television show that went, they went 30 years in the future, everyone would be working VR suits everywhere and everything. Um, but it is still around. It's just nowhere near as... Like, it never really caught on. Like, I, when I was vacationing in uh, New Zealand a couple years ago, uh, in this resort town, they had a... I was looking for things to do that didn't cost too much money, and they had this VR place where you go hang out and play the VR game. So I went there, and it was kind of fun. Um, it, you know, it was this one thing where I was an elf shooting, like, orcs from a tower. It's kind of just like a video game basically but you see it in vr and then but then i did this other one that was like you're an astronaut in space and it was like commissioned by nasa to make it seem really realistic so it wasn't a video game you were just like and they warned you about motion sickness or whatever so it was kind of cool but um no it's still it's not a huge thing though <laughs> it never caught on anyway i digress as i tend to do so um yeah, so the whole thing with Jordy's mother, I think the revelation that it was just an alien, to me, that's part of what deflated this whole episode. Like, if it was actually Jordy's mother, it might have been more interesting. Not if, if Jordy's theory was correct, that it was the ship that got through the funnel or whatever. Uh, like, the way he described it, like, Data and everyone else were acting like it was the dumbest shit they've ever heard. But for me, as a, you know, audience member of Star Trek, it didn't seem any more crazy than any of the other shit that goes on <laughs> in these Star Trek shows. I like, get totally buy it. Um, and I think they dismissed it too easily. But had it been that thing, then maybe that wouldn't have been so great. That would have been too obvious. It's like, oh, Jordy was right all along, and he had to defy orders to save his mother, and it would have been too easy. But that being said, like, they could have thought of some other twist. Uh, but somehow, maybe his mother uh, died and was able to send, like, a message from, like, uh, in the past or whatever to, to Jordy or something, or maybe it was his subconscious somehow or I don't know something I think if it had been his mother in some way maybe not the way they described it then that would have been more interesting the fact that when they revealed it was an alien I'm like, yeah, of course it's a fucking alien uh, and it's just like who gives a shit I don't know to me that felt bland that felt like stuff that Star Trek has done tons of times before oh it's just an alien in distress and these aliens were kind of dicks too they were like manipulating Jordy when Jordy wouldn't do what they want they tried to fucking kill him uh, and um, once Jordy like risked his life to save them they're like oh we're safe now goodbye didn't even say thank you now granted I know you could say they're aliens maybe they don't have the concept of thank you but I don't know would, it would have been nice. I think <laughs> thank you would have been nice. But anyway. Um, and they were manipulating him. Like they read his thoughts. And 
and uh, manifested his like missing mother to, tr to manipulate him. I don't know why we should be rooting for these aliens to survive. <laughs> but anyway, and they kill the whole crew too. Again, this is shades of night terror, shades of all these, I don't know, all these other ones with aliens like trying to communicate with the crew. I don't know. It's just, it's really bland to me that's that's all all that stuff like there's directions that could have took this episode even with jordy and his mother that would have been more interesting um because it's funny because ronald d moore is quoted as saying like when he was in the writer's room and they came up with the this idea he's like really this is what we came to story about jordy's mother we've reached a new low the show should end and everyone quotes that to be like, ha you see, season seven sucks because they ran out of ideas, which I still fight back against. Like, all due respect to Ronald D. Moore. Um, yes, there were, like, bad episodes like this one, bland episodes like this, but I still will maintain there are more bland episodes in season five than there are in season seven. But that is just me. Anyway. <laughs> um, anyway. Because season seven had good writers like Renee Ankaveria and Noreen Shankar, and what does season five have? Joe fucking Manowski. But anyway, sorry. <laughs> Getting off track again. So, um, there was a good point I heard someone make about how Jordy's mother was missing from six days, and everyone, like, talking about the, the fact that she's dead was pretty much a foregone conclusion. And they pointed out that the Enterprise have gone missing longer than that, multiple times. And nobody, like, had a funeral for them <laughs> or presumed that they were dead. It seems like they're really jumping the gun. And that's the whole thing, like, LaForge, I mean, not LaForge, but Troy and Riker and, and everyone else is, is trying to make Geordi, Geordi face up to the fact that your mother's dead. You're in denial. You can't face the truth. But she's only been missing for six days. Like, they pointed, someone else pointed out specifically in cause and effect, the Enterprise was missing for 17 days. And there's then other examples like how long were they gone and disappeared and where no one has gone before. And I'm sure there's other examples where the Enterprise just, uh, just disappeared much longer than just six days and no one like presumed they were dead and had funerals for them so i think i i agree with jordy on this one they are all jumping the gun and also of course thinking of voyager and of course it took them like at least i think four years before they found out that the crew of Voyager survived. Now, in that case, with Voyager, I wouldn't blame them for holding memorial service. In fact, I think they mentioned that they did have a memorial service for Voyager before they realized they were still alive. Uh, but that makes sense. Four years. Six days does not make sense. <laughs> That's, that, is, that is just a whole bunch of nonsense. Um, so... The one thing I did like about this episode, um, I did like how Jordy was really determined to to save his mother, and he made a really good point. He's like, if there's one in a million chances that she's alive, I need to find out if that's true. Otherwise, I'll never be able to live with myself. That is something very relatable. Like, he's acknowledging, yeah, this is the long shot, but I'm willing to risk my life because I just can't go on living knowing that I didn't, that there's a possibility she's still alive and I didn't explore it. I get that. And I think Data gets that, too. So this is my favorite scene in the episode. Um, some of you might have been able to predict this, but when Data uh, helps Jordy, finds Jordy in his interface, and Data goes in to help him... Um, yeah, that's that's. I love when they do good stuff with Data, where they show his friendship with Jordy and him not just being a simple bee boo bop robot, but actually, because Data isn't that, and people who think he are is they're wrong, <laughs> including some of the writers who wrote him incorrectly. Um, Data is always better when he has this tinge of humanity, but in his own android way. And here, Jordy was his best friend. 
He saw that he was suffering. He understood. And I think Jordy said that to Data about if there's one in a million chance I need it. And I think Data understood that. And he's like, I need to take this leap of faith with him and help him. But then, of course, Jordy was like manipulating Data. Because once he was in the interface and Data's like, no, I don't, I'm not going to let you go any further. And Jordy's like, well, if you don't, I'm going to keep going down. So I'm going to die unless you do what I say. And he's like... That is not fair, Jordy. <laughs> like that was a good moment. Like it was, I, you see their friendship come through in this, and I do love how um, at the end of the episode where Picard was dressing down Jordy, he was like, you know, I take full responsibility. Don't do anything to Data, and Picard's just like, um, well, I'll deal with Commander Data later. So this is let me assume exactly how he dealt with Data. Bad data. Don't do it again. There you go. On your way. <laughs> oh, I'm, we had to guess though because they never um, mentioned it ever again. But the, the essentially that's what he did with Jordy as well because he's like this. You know, this will appear in your permanent record. That's like what principals say <laughs> in the cartoons. This is gonna be. <laughs> permanent record Ooh, not my permanent record he didn't use the term permanent record but that's essentially what this is, what it said <laughs> but anywho i mean yeah it's more of a military-esque situation so they do look at the record when he goes for promotions and transfer they can see oh yeah he disobeyed orders this one time but still it is i don't know it is kind of a situation Anyway, <laughs> and when he openly defied orders, but here's the thing, I blame Riker and Picard for um, not doing anything about it, for, if we, if we did get that nice scene where Riker was like talking about his, his mother and how he denied that she was dead, that, like that was a good scene too, and I like that Jordy just didn't dismiss him out of hand, I was worried because I couldn't remember exactly what happened in the scene, and I was worried he interrupted him and be like, yeah, but that's not the same thing here, which he didn't, he let him speak and let him say his piece, but then Jordy did, and not too rudely I think, he did just point out there's differences. Like, in your case, your mother actually died, you had a body, you knew she was dead. If that was the case with me, then I could move on too, but that's not the case. Uh, which was actually a very good point. Um, it made me think of that movie, The Vanishing, with Keith R. Sutherland, which apparently is just a, a cheap American ripoff of a French movie. But, um, and who else is it? Kevin Bridges was in it. But anyway... Uh, where he, his girlfriend went missing and he became... Oh, Sandra Bullock was his girlfriend. That was before she became big. But anyway, she went missing and he became obsessed with finding her. He wasn't even that in love with her. He was mainly just obsessed with the fact that she, he didn't know whatever happened to her. Uh, maybe remind me of that a bit. And that, that kind of makes sense. Uh, just not knowing would be more of a, a pull. But anyway, in this scene... Jordy even says to Riker, flat out, like tells him, I can't let this go. Riker, why, why are you fucking surprised when Jordy breaks orders and tries to do the interface by himself? Of course, he's, he's basically telling you that. He's essentially telling you, hey, I'm going to go do the interface whether you like it or not. And Riker's just like, oh yeah, that's not really what he means. He means that he's just going to the bathroom or something. <laughs> Like, of course, and even Picard should have seen this one coming because Jordy was, and they're like, oh, and when they said on the bridge and, and Worf were like, oh, you know, the, the ship is going down and like, Jordy, oh my God, he's defying orders. What a shock. I'm like, of course he is, you idiots. To this episode's credit, though, Data figured it out. And he's like, I know you too well, which... It's nice moon for data, but seriously though, everyone should have been able to figure, especially Riker, because he essentially told Riker to his face that that's what he was going to do. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I don't know. Oh my God, he's breaking orders. What a shock! So stupid. But <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, it's yeah, it's not it's not the worst episode in the world. 
And I think it is kind of a shame that we don't find out what what happened to um, Jordy's mother. I heard an alternate ending proposed, which actually would have been really good if um, while Jordy was defying orders and going down to the ship and talking to his mother, uh, Picard got news from the Admiral dude that they found the ship, his mother's ship, and they found that she's dead. And so they do now have proof, have a body. And and this is before Geordi figured out that these were aliens. And, and Picard would go down and say, Geordi, you know, we have, we got news from Starfleet. Your mother's dead. That is not your mother you're talking to. And it could be a big shock. And then it turns into fire or whatnot. Like that, I think that would have been more powerful. I think it's kind of a cop-out that we don't ever find out what happened to his mother, but, you know, they're not going to reference this in other episodes because (laughs) it's not really important. They never reference his parents ever again after this. Yeah, I think it would have been more interesting if this was Riker and his father, but, you know, that's just me. Anyway, I would now like to thank very much my Patreon supporters for supporting me on Patreon. It's very much appreciated. It does help me continue with the channel. I'd like to give a big special thanks to Brandon Neil Howes and um, Antarius. Thank you so much for your strong support. It's very much appreciated. I would also like to give a shout out to Benjamin Mead, Greg Marley, Francisco, Chuck Hooks, Kyrie091, Anthony D. Benedictus, Ricky, Matty Jester, Joel Valls, Alessandro Migalasio, Norman Buckwald, Stephen Kennedy, Britton Berg, and Allison Fordyce. Thank you so very, very much for your support. Um, so, we have a few patron comments on this episode. First comment is from Stephen Kennedy, who says, This isn't a good episode. Jordy plays a virtual reality game. Jordy's mother is missing. They investigate, and guess what happens next? Jordy's mother is alive. When they decide Jordy is crazy, guess what they do? They leave no security so Jordy can play his virtual reality game. Data helps Jordy, which I actually liked. When Jordy uh, finds out that his mother isn't that his mother isn't his missing mother, uh, she tells him some BS as the episode is almost over. So in other words, the writers didn't have a fucking clue how to end it. Joe Manowski strikes again. So my rating is four. Why are most of the stories about Jordy and Crusher are not that good out of ten? Fair point. Fair point. You know. I was watching a, a review where they were pondering if this was the best Geordie episode, and I sa- and they were like, oh, his next phase is better, though, but is that really a Geordie episode? That's more of a Geordie and Rue episode. It's not like a, a rat out Geordie episode. And the whole time I was like, mind's eye! Mind's eye! Now, I know some people might say not say that's a Geordie episode because... Uh, you know, they have the stuff with Picard and the Klingons and all this other shit going on. But, come on, Geordi's the main focus. He gets kidnapped by the Romulans. That is definitely a Geordi episode. And even if you, alright, let's say you don't consider the Mind's Eye a Geordi episode. Then The Enemy. It's not the best episode ever, but it's definitely better than this. And that's very clearly a Geordi episode. But anyway, I don't know some people like Identity Crisis, but I think that episode's kind of boring, too. <laughs> anyway, so, and I like Aquiel better than most people do, to be fair. I think Aquiel's better than this episode, too. But that is just me. Anyway, uh, next comment is from Antarius, who says, Normally you would assume that Jordy is the only one who realizes the truth and is right in the end, so it's a nice change that things end up completely differently. But this ending isn't very creative. We had and are going to have a couple of episodes where an alien who was accidentally picked up is trying to get back to its natural habitat. A lot of things just happen to get the script from A to B to C to D. For example, the facts that they can't disconnect him immediately and that it's dangerous to amplify the probe signals are just there to create danger, but aren't very logical. The strongest part of the episodes were the scenes when Picard, Riker, and especially Data showed their strong friendship, sympathy for LaForge. My rating is a 5 out of 10. 
Yeah, I think that's fair. I, I'd like this, especially the data. I think the data scenes were by far the best. And not just when Data goes to help Jordy at the end, but that other scene where Data's looking at the empty computer. He, I guess he's reading the app, doing abstract poetry. He's like one of those Shia LaBeouf art exam things. Um, but, and, and Jordy is like, you know, oh, I, I'm not here to talk about my mother. I'm just here to say goodbye and, or to just hang out. And then he was like, I, you know what? You're right. He gave up too easily. I am here to talk about my mother. And the way he was consoling him was very good. Like, and you could see their friendship come through. So I think that was, and then you had a few scenes with Picard and Riker as well. Although they did it for more of like a condescending kind of way, but a, a heartfelt way, especially that speech that Riker gives about his own mother like that was definitely really heartfelt um but still I don't know they still had that tinge of yeah you're crazy but I'm just gonna pussyfoot around you and not, not say that you're crazy where has data felt more like he wasn't like even though he doubted him just as much as Riker and Picard did he wasn't coming from that sort of condescending perspective at least that's how I read it Anyway, um, next comment is from Norman Buckwald, who says, so it, ha so it appears that the producer looked at the fourth season and decided not only um, should backstories of characters somewhat covered in the seventh season, but also include more family members, including introducing quite a few of them in a number of ways. This was the first of these episodes and one of the most boring. Unfortunately, especially since we all know that it is not Jordy's mother and an alien entity appealing to him, well, duh. Maybe not as bad as the Rogue Planet reveal, but sigh. And to what Lore Runner calls the Cassandra effect, where no one believes Jordy at least uh, saw his mother, further makes this episode tiring to watch. To this day, we have no answer whether Jordy's mother is ever found, so that we have to assume canonically she was lost. As interesting as it is to learn Jordy's uh, came from a Starfleet family with both parents and it like Mariner nothing further really adds to the story uh, of the texture of further in-depthness of Jordy except what he really loves uh, except what he really loves missing uh, sorry except what he really loves and misses his mother I'll give this episode four on the skip list of track episodes out of ten Jordy deserves so much more in the seventh season. Then again, while Crusher gets a more memorable scene, I guess at the same time, I'd say pew, phew, Jordy got through the seventh season unscathed. LOL. Um, yeah, that's a good point to bring up that season seven is the season of family. I talked about this in season four when a lot of people were calling season four the season of family. I'm like, no, no, it's not season four, it's season seven. Because season four only started out that way. It was like only the first batch of episodes. You got family, and you got brother, and you got reunion. But then after that, they, oh, yeah, legacy is another one, Tasha's sister. But then after that first batch, though, they kind of dropped the family thing. Where season seven, like, this is only episode three, and we'll get family stuff, like, right up to towards the very end of the season. I think the one with Picard's son is probably the last one of those. And so, yeah, that, that was the well that they kept going back to. So season seven was definitely uh, the, the season of family. And if you... And if you believe Ronald D. Moore, he sees this as a sign that they were tired, exhausted, and out of ideas. Which, okay, I'll be, you know, that's fair, but not all of the family um, episodes were bad. I, For example, I really like, um, I believe it's called Homeward with Worf's foster brother. Uh, and by the way, he wasn't invented in season seven. He was mentioned in Heart of Glory, and I was waiting for the show to see him. So when they finally showed up, I'm like, yes, they're finally showing this character who very clearly stated already existed. But <laughs> that is another story that I will get to 
eventually. All right, so next comment is from Ricky, who says, This episode to me was pretty forgettable. Like, it's always hard to remember what happens in this episode. I mean, the interface that Jordy uses, I'm surprised it's never used, seen, or even mentioned ever again, as this could be useful in certain situations. I did find it interesting that Jordy's uh, parents were both in Starfleet, uh, and that we saw more of his backstory, but his mother wasn't fleshed out properly to me. Like, I didn't get emotionally invested when she and the crew died, even though I was supposed to care, but I didn't. Uh, didn't get to me, and I found it, found it interesting that Jordy defied Picard and used the interface again anyways, and we had a cool ending scene with Picard and Jordy that Picard said that his actions will be noted in his permanent report. So this episode was average. My rating is a 5 out of 10. Um, yeah, so... It's actually kind of common in Star Trek to introduce new and interesting technology and then never show it ever again. Like they did that in Deep Space Nine where they introduced these funky hollow emitters where they, instead of uh, communicating through view screen, they would have someone appear as a hologram on the ship. That only lasted like two episodes. And and then there was like the, the wave, warp wave thingy and then granted that was more of an experiment, but still, it's never seen or heard of ever again. Like that would have been useful during the burn, you know, I'm just saying. But <laughs> but um yeah, so yeah, this is, unfortunately this is something a common occurrence, so I actually wasn't that surprised that this technology was ever never mentioned or seen ever again. Anyway, thank you so much, patrons, for your comments. So my rating for interface out of 10, it's going to be a five average. Now, I, was, I didn't know what I would, what rating I would give this episode going into the, my re re recording, my reviews. So I, a lot of times I like on the fly, I got to, after I talk and talk about it. And for a while I was thinking of giving it a four, but Reading the patron comments and seeing a lot of people give it fives, it kind of convinced me. But moreover, like, all the good stuff, like the data stuff. I think the data scene alone where he, like, risks, you know, he defies orders to help his friend. Like, that was a really good scene. So I gotta at least acknowledge it, bump it up to a five just for that. And there were some good moments, as I said, between the characters. I just think the main storyline fell flat because... We don't know who Jordy's mother is, and we don't really feel connection to it. And then the reveal that it's just some alien pretending to be his mother was kind of super predictable and very uninteresting. So, so mostly the episode falls flat. But I will say there, there's some. It's not as I said. It was better than I thought it would be when I went back and rewatched it. So, there's definitely some good elements there. But it's definitely one of the. The weak episodes people point to for season 7 to say that season 7 sucks. But there's a lot of good ones they point to, which I will get to. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that is it for my review of Interface. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up. Uh, make a comment below. Uh, what did you think about Interface? Did you think it was as average as I thought it was? Um... And, uh, yeah, if you really, really want to support the channel, you can, you're able to, and you really enjoy and want to support what I do, then you can support me on Patreon. There is a link to that in the description below. Uh, I have different rewards for different tiers, um, different plans, uh, some where you get uh, patron-only uh, videos that I make exclusively for my Patreon supporters where I revisit reviews that I've already done and I also have pre-releases you can request a video for me to do stuff like that so if you can and if you you know like what I do then uh, yeah it would be great if you could check that out otherwise leaving a like leaving a subscribe that sort of thing also extremely helpful so um, let's see what's coming up next um, on my channel um, if I could just bring up the old schedule here. So Thursday, 
Lower Decks Season 5 premieres. We'll be reviewing Episodes 1 and 2 together because they're coming out together, so might as well review them together. Saturday will be my review for Gambit Parts 1 and 2. And Monday, I'll go back to DS9 for my review for Invasive Procedures. And then on Wednesday, next Wednesday, I will be back over on Patreon to do another Patreon-exclusive video revisiting my review for Phantasms, one of those great Season 7 episodes that's underrated that I was talking about. (laughs) already reviewed it, so I'll be revisiting my review for that episode on Patreon. So be sure to check check out my channel so you can keep up with all that as I continue to cover Star Trek The Next Generation and Star Trek Deep Space Nine and many other shows as well. So be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that. And thanks a lot for watching.